Good afternoon, Houston, and welcome to Feeling Better Naturally with Dr. John Trowbridge here on Star 790 KBME for the best medical updates ever. Are you fearful that better health seems out of your reach regardless of how hard you try or whatever you do? Or maybe you're afraid of suffering with heart disease or diabetes or lingering with a stroke or cancer? Or do you avoid thinking about these things because you'll just try to make the best of it, whatever happens? Are you limited by joint pains or finding that you can't run from your headaches? Well, maybe you're hesitant to try something new because you're afraid that what you'll do is wrong, or maybe because you'd better be right or nothing will ever help. Well, regardless of what might be happening with your health problems, these next few minutes could be the answer to your prayers. Unless, of course, you're convinced that your doctors have done everything possible or if you've already decided to have surgery, but you're simply waiting till you worsen further. But if you hold out any hope at all, then you should know that we see desperate people every day, people skeptical about whether anything we do can make a difference in their lives, and sure enough, many of them are pleasantly surprised. Maybe you could be one of them. After all, the only thing you have to lose is your discomfort, your fear, your worry, maybe even your anger that no one has really listened to you or that no one has been able to help you. We'll be talking about what you can do to get out of your pain and get on with your life. I've practiced for 25 years never believing that you're suffering from a deficiency of one or more drugs or that an operation is probably the best answer. Whatever ails you, God built your system to repair itself and to restore more normal function. And that, in a nutshell, is the whole buzz on the topic of alternative or holistic medicine that you've been hearing about these past few years. Drugs and surgery can be helpful. But true natural healing depends on three factors. First, find what's blocking you from feeling better and remove it. Second, find what trace factors you might be missing but you need for repair and provide them. And third, find what switches need to be turned on and turn them on. We'll share practical pointers to help you improve with the most common problems seen in doctors' offices, practical preventive medicine updates to help reduce your risk factors for the most serious diseases that claim our comfort and then our lives, and practical ways to reduce your risks and improve your results with drugs and surgery that you might need. As I've said for years, when life is your choice, failure is not an option. So learn more today on how you can succeed. And if what we offer doesn't apply to you right now, then share this life-saving information with family or friends who do need to know. The book of Ecclesiastes tells us in chapter 1, verse 9, that there is no new thing under the sun. So let's see what we might learn from those who've walked the path ahead of us. Frank Lloyd Wright, famous architect and absolute genius of our time, says, The truth is more important than the facts. The truth is more important. And indeed, the truth of how we get you better might be the most important part of what you learn in your health care. And talking about learning from your health care, Sandy from Alvin emailed us to uh, share details on how to reduce the use of pain medications. So let's turn our attention to this common problem. We'll call this uh, chronic pain, even though sometimes people come in with acute pain that has yet to change over to chronic. You know, pain is one of life's paradoxes. And on the one hand, it's a universal phenomenon that everyone experiences, at least occasionally during life. And yet it's so personal and private that each person's experience is unique, and the sufferer himself is the only true expert on his pain. These phrases will ring really true. They are from the preface, the beginning of Instant Pain Relief, the second edition of this wonderful book by William J. Faber, Dr. Faber and Dr. Morton Walker. Dr. Faber in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, who trained me in treating you with this technique. So I'll go further from his preface. In its many forms, ranging from sharp stabs to dull aches, pain demands attention, sometimes to the exclusion of all other considerations. The word itself derives from the Greek word for penalty, suggesting an ancient perception of pain as a price we pay for living. Of course, pain is not designed as a random punishment. Rather, it's a primal warning system that protects against injury and encourages immobilization during healing. And although acute pain can be excruciating, it's usually both transient and purposeful. It doesn't last that long, and it really serves a good purpose. It's something else, too, when pain becomes chronic. Then it loses obvious meaning and threatens our well-being. 
Usually chronic pain is a signal of internal dysfunction, that something has gone awry with a singular segment of the body. Perhaps only a few cellular elements are a major portion of the physiologic system, the way we do what we do inside. Now, despite pain's universality, it has been an incompletely understood phenomenon that is usually discussed in terms of theory, not fact. Physiology and perception have been so tightly intertwined that distinguishing one element from the other is sometimes impossible, and one result of society's confusion is that pain, whether it's acute or chronic, has often been inadequately managed, of course, to the detriment of the pain victim. Now, all that confusion is changing to enlightenment now that neural fascial therapy has come upon the scene. That's neural fascial therapy, or what we call NT for short. The concepts of this treatment's inventors, the Hünke brothers, two German physicians now deceased, explain a great deal about the cause and character of chronic pain and physical dysfunction. Now, although some may be inclined to think of chronic pain as just an extension of acute pain, the two pain types differ significantly in many ways. Let's look at them. By definition, acute pain lasts less than six months, chronic pain more than six months. Acute pain is highly localized. Chronic pain is probably poorly localized. The character of acute pain usually has it feeling sharp, perhaps radiating, and generally arising from an acute injury or disease process, and it passes quickly. Chronic pain is often dull, aching, diffuse, constant, nagging, intractable. Chronic pain may be associated with chronic pathology, in other words, illness, or it may persist after recovery from a disease or injury. Acute pain is associated with autonomic nervous system responses. That means automatic background things, such as increased blood pressure, increased heart rate, sweating, pallor, that's a a paleness, widening of the eyes, pupils, restlessness, grimacing, facial expressions, and anxiety. Now, chronic pain may or may not have autonomic nervous system response, but the patient feels exhausted and acts listless and depressed and withdrawn. The person experiencing acute pain often expects medical intervention to relieve it. The individual suffering from chronic pain, on the other hand, anticipates only that medical intervention may reduce the pain, but he or she also believes that its presence and the chronicity, in other words, the continuation over time, will indeed continue. Such a common belief was valid before the advent of neural fascial therapy, but now rapid therapeutic response is a common occurrence when this new or old treatment, depending on how you look at it, is administered by an open-minded, well-trained, and skilled biologic physician. What we're talking about is something quite dramatic. Now, what is neurofascial therapy? Well, the procedure is uh, involving the manipulation of nerves and tissues by employing a small, tiny, tiny gauge needle for administering tiny amounts of a diluted local anesthetic. So, yeah, we use needles, but don't worry about how, how long the needle is. Worry about how wide it is. This administration is not for the purposes of temporarily numbing a nerve sensitivity, but rather for a greater physiological purpose, which first requires some explanation to fully answer the question, what is NT, or neurofascial therapy? Now, every science textbook teaches students that all cells, including the cell components of nerves and blood vessels, bones and muscles and connective tissues, have a, what we call a bioelectric gradient, and that uh, consists of the electronegative charges of ions inside the cells. Now, these are provided by negative atomic particles from minerals that coat the cell's outside membrane and electropositive charges from minerals along the membrane's inside, and thus a cell is like a little battery of potential energy between positive and negative charges separated by its membrane wall. Now, when some disruption of the cell wall or membrane which separates these positive and negative charges occurs, a hole or opening develops and the normal bioelectric potential reverses and negative charges rush through the opening into the cell and positive charges rush out and in a microsecond, an alarm signal, it goes to the spinal cord, says start functioning, turn on, or more often short circuit and give pain. And with the latter response, such a short circuit or miscommunication in the body's electrical system gives rise to a more permanent pathology and the onset of chronic pain. Doesn't Dr. Faber describe that so beautifully? We're going to talk specifically about how this has something to do with you in just a moment. 
The time is about 10 past the hour, and you're listening to Feeling Better, Naturally, with Dr. John Trowbridge on Star 790 KBME, the best medical updates ever. Your extended health forecast is brought to you now by Life Celebrating Health in Humble, near Bush Intercontinental Airport. Our crystal ball shows clear to partly cloudy, and the winds of change are blowing. Are you acting more like an ostrich burying your head in the sand because you don't feel able to deal with your health problems? Then your tail feathers will be getting wet when partly cloudy skies change to rain. Perhaps you're clucking around, kind of happy that a new medication has you feeling better, but not realizing that those fancy patches and band-aids might not be the best for you. And if you're not changing anything and simply hoping for the best, because you know you've been feeling pretty good, or maybe you're afraid or unsure, then cloudy to very stormy skies are on your horizon. Or just maybe you're ready to make changes to regain and maintain better health. Then sunny skies are coming your way. At Life Celebrating Health, you can depend on us as partners in your health care, and we'll design personalized programs to help keep your days sunny. And we'll show you how to spend less and get more. Call for your free telephone consultation with one of our treatment assistants. No fee, no obligation. Just dial 1-800-FIX-PAIN. That's 1-800-F-I-X. P-A-I-N, 1-800-FIX-PAIN. Ask to receive our free e-newsletter. Just share with us your email address or send your questions to us through our Internet website, www.healthchoicesnow.com, because unlike the weather, you do have choices for better health. We are joined this afternoon by one of our favorite people, a young lady who came to uh, see us in Numble uh, several months ago. Uh, Frances Parker is a nurse who uh, had been unemployed due to injury, quite significant injuries, as a matter of fact. But the thing that we wanted to talk about today was an interesting scar that she unfortunately had that was very deep and quite painful. Frances, how are you this afternoon? I'm doing fine. Well, I know that, and isn't that wonderful for you to be able to say that? Yes, it is. <laughs> it really, really is. You know, uh, people who have pain will relate to the fact but you fell asleep on a sleeping pad because of pain medications and stuff and burned yourself. Yes. Uh, I did that myself years ago. Actually, it was on a vibrator, but the motor was hot and actually burned my skin, not near as severely as yours. But people know that, hey, I've been in pain. Some people have been in pain like that, right? Right. And uh, when you did this, how long ago was it? Uh, it's about 12 years now. About 12 years. And this was a fairly large thing. We're talking about two silver dollars in size, right? Uh, it was even bigger than that originally, and I had to have surgery to close it. Uh, surgery to close it. That means it was at least a third-degree burn down into the deeper the way, tissues. It was all the way down to the muscle. All the way down to the muscle. Significant burn. We, we don't realize how those heating pads uh, can, can really make a huge dent in, in our circulation and actually cook our blood as it's going through. Uh, that's why we tell people always wrap a heating pad with a towel because it's so much safer. But right. uh, Mine was wrapped in a towel. Oh, great. Okay. There goes that theory, doesn't it? Right. So, you know, Francis, you were um, you were obviously hurt. I mean, this thing was a deep uh, wound. You had to have surgical closure. Did you get skin grafting on it? No, no, no grafting. Okay. So you had a, a healing with the scarring, and uh, that scar was pretty solid. Yeah. Oh. And there was a lot of tissue missing. It looked like a big shark bite. It did, didn't it? Yeah, it did. Absolutely. It had a, a, a darkened uh, pink and angry coloration, and and uh, it was real thick. Yeah. Uh, kind of like uh, pressing on cardboard almost. Yeah. Now, when you talked with uh, your doctors about this over the last dozen years, what did they say? M most of them wouldn't even look at it. They said it couldn't possibly be causing any of the weakness in my leg. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Couldn't cause weakness or pain. It's just a local scar and forget it. Right. My goodness, how wrong were they? Well, I had gotten to the point I couldn't even cross my legs, and I climbed some Indian ruins on Saturday. So it's quite a significant difference. So uh, Indian ruins are a bit taller. You're now in Arizona. Yes. And uh, obviously enjoying the sights there. Right. You would not have been able to enjoy some of those if you hadn't gotten that treated, would you? I wouldn't have been able to do any of it. I'd still be unemployed. Ah. If I wasn't walking well enough to go back to work. 
you know, that's really true. I didn't point that out. But uh, between the problems with your low back, which we were using with reconstructive therapy, right. that's, that's the injection for the rubber bands that hold the bones and joints together, and uh, then the neurofascial therapy. And I looked at that and I said, do you mind if I treat this? And you said, treat what? Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to treat the scar and you'd given up right. on that. Right. Nobody ever wanted to treat your scar. No, nobody had a feeling that it had anything to do with any of my problems. Well, they were wrong, weren't they? Big time. Yeah. And, you know, it, and it's sad to know that simply because the doctor didn't know about a technique, the, they made the assumption that no technique existed at all. Right. And yet it was developed in Germany uh, almost 100 years ago. It's, it's, it's 80, uh, 79 years ago now. Yeah. And uh, that just kind of tells you that around the world, inventions are, are made every day that potentially can help us. Right. Now, uh, I know that you drove quite a distance to, uh, to come in for treatment. Yeah. And I guess my real question is, you know, people are going to say, yeah, but she was going and she was getting injections and I don't want needles and all this other stuff. Was it worth it to you? Most definitely it, it was and will continue to be. Because, I mean, it's made such a difference in my life. I was able to go back to work. I'm able to be um, active and do things I want to do that I had given up hope on before. And I, I, I think that's the key I couldn't thing. even go to the mall because I couldn't walk. Right. You were hurting all the time. And yeah. people don't think of a scar as hurting. You know, they say, well, you know, it's still a little upset after surgery and stuff like that or after the injury. But um, the scar can actually create pain that you don't even realize, can't it? Yeah. And uh, I said, now let me try this. And how quickly did you notice that just doing this neurofascial therapy that you were actually improving with that scar? Um, real quick, pretty quickly, it started softening. And I started moving my leg, um, probably a combination of the RT to the low back and the, releasing the, the scar tissue in the scar. Um, I started moving my leg almost immediately and was able to lift it up for the first time in about 10 years after the third treatment. Wasn't that awesome? Yeah. Absolutely wonderful. Now, we continued to uh, pester you about letting me go ahead and, and treat that because I wanted to uh, to get the, the best result. How would you describe that scar now? Uh, most of the tissue has filled in underneath it. It looks um, smoother, flatter, softer. Um, there, there's still a significant scar there, but it doesn't have the, um, the pulling limitations that it did before. You know, it's I... It's not as noticeable under clothing, like bathing suit, as it was before. Wonderful. You know, I tell people that scars have anger in them. Yeah. And, uh, yours most certainly did. They, they stay active, electrically active, and in a disturbing way, in a painful way, Sometimes in a way that's that's you know reflected farther from the uh, the scar itself, like down your legs. Uh -huh. And when you came in, I said, "Gee, I know we can make your low back better. Uh, I don't know if we can uh, help with the strength in your legs as much as you might want. I don't know if we can help with the pain in your legs. And how have we done so far? Uh, done excellent so far. So far, uh, <laughs> yeah." I haven't given up yet. We'll be back in Texas sometime. I know, and uh, I still have ideas on what I want to do with you, too. Yeah, I still have a little bit of pain, but I don't have any of the burning pain down my legs that I had when I came in. I walk normally. I can bend over and pick things up. I can squat down and stand back up without falling. Um, it's, uh, it's just amazing. Uh, I'm not even the same person because I was, well... But what they had told me was I was disabled but not impaired because I wasn't surgically fixable, and so I was being retired with um, no income. And full military honors, right? Right. <laughs> oh, gosh. You know, it, and it's the social factors that come in with pain like that are just tragic. Right. Because they, they, they take you out of your life, literally. Yeah, I, was, I wasn't doing anything anymore because uh, I couldn't. I said I couldn't even go to the mall, and I could barely go to the grocery store. Yeah, I think um, it's uh, kind of important to share with our friends that you actually uh, are a nurse and uh, uh, quite an intensive uh, pediatric nurse, right? Uh, orthopedic... Uh, labor, labor and delivery. Labor and delivery, right. So uh, you've got to do the squatting and the pushing and the pulling. Right. That's... And I'm able to do that now. I'm working full-time, uh, which is three 12-hour shifts a week. Wow. And the other four days, we have to explore Arizona. 
Wow, that's excellent. Our, our best wishes to you and your husband. I know that you've got a, a wonderful place to explore there, so keep doing it and having fun. We will. And thanks for joining us this afternoon. So much and to share your story. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. And the other four days we have to explore Arizona. Wow, that's excellent. Our, our best wishes to you and your husband. I know that you've got a, a wonderful place to explore there, so keep doing it and having fun. We will. And thanks for joining us this afternoon. So much and to share your story. Thank you. Thank you. It's now about 20 past the hour here on Star 790 KBME with the best medical updates ever. Let's pause briefly for this public service announcement. Just a reminder, click it or tick it. Unbuckled drivers and passengers are risking their lives and they're costing you a fortune. Increasing the nation's seatbelt use rate from 68% to 90% and reducing child fatalities by 25% would save taxpayers almost $9 billion annually and save more than 5,500 lives. That's 5,500 lives. That's a lot. Unbuckled occupants waste lives and money. Please buckle up, Texas. There's just too much to lose. Well, special deals about today. You know, uh, it's Emergency Medical Services Week. They're there when you need them. Dial 911. The sign of Taurus the bull ends on May 20th, while Gemini the twins begins, or is that Gemini the twins begin on May 21st, you decide. And here's our blast from the past, Burma Shave. Of all the drunks who drive on Sunday, some are still alive on Monday. Burma Shave. So, we're pleased to bring to you an absolutely wonderful guest who has been on our show before, talking about his book, Pain, Pain, Go Away. And we're joined now by Dr. William J. Faber, doctor of osteopathy, who has written this book, the second edition of Instant Pain Relief. And, you know, it really matters because if you have migraines or head injury or chronic pain or pain after surgery or injury or loss of motion or nerve damage and all these kinds of problems, there is a proven method of immediate resolution of pain and dysfunction, and that is neurofascial therapy or NT therapy. Bill Faber, thanks for coming back on our show this afternoon. Glad to be here. Hey, you know, we, we always enjoy talking with you because you have had such a, uh, a wonderful background that you've been able to share these neat technologies, the reconstructive therapy in Pain, Pain, Go Away, again, available on Amazon.com, just so people know. And Instant Pain Relief, the book that we're reviewing today and, and sharing with our audience, because you have really trained up as an expert in taking care of what people bring in that's hurting. Well, we've been blessed with the experiences, the knowledge, and uh, skills to, uh, to do that. And we feel very fortunate that we're able to restore people to their lives without drugs, without surgery, and without Dr. Faber. <laughs> you know, and that's an important thing, too, because, you know, people always think, oh, well, it just goes on and on. I guess I'm going to have to get used to all these doctors and stuff. No, you're not. We're talking about permanent repairs, aren't we? Absolutely. And in doing this instant pain relief, first of all, give us the background, if you will, when you first encountered neurofascial therapy, what you thought and, and, and where you proceeded from there. Well, basically in the um, mid-80s or early 80s, uh, in the early 80s we started doing the reconstructive therapy, and uh, one of our presidents of the uh, osteopathic uh, college of therapy, Dr. Harold Walmer, who is uh, in the uh, Pain, Pain, Go Away book, uh, brought out that uh, the uh, Germans uh, had brought out the first English edition of the professional book. They had 11 uh, editions of the professional book in German, but the first book in English was uh, just published. And following that publication, they had the first North American conference in Port Severn, Canada, some 90 miles north of Toronto, which uh, we went to that week-long seminar by uh, Jorgen, Dr. Jorgen Hunicke, the uh, 
nephew of the founders of uh, or the discoverers of neural therapy. So you really got it almost from the horse's mouth. Well, we were fortunate for that, and uh, when we heard that uh, they were coming, we <clears throat> cleared our schedule and, and went there. And and how exciting was it? Well, it was uh, at a um, kind of a fishing uh, resort uh, there in the uh, in the backwoods, uh, ninety miles uh, north of. Uh, Toronto, and uh, we got to hear a uh, obstetrician, a gynecologist who used the therapy, a general practitioner, and uh, Dr. Hunicke, uh, Jorgen Hunicke, he just basically did uh, pain work, as I recall. And uh, so they did uh, discussion of the technology, and we did some uh, actual patients from uh, around the area. At the conference? At the conference. And did they have any uh, dramatic responses? Uh, <laughs> actually, yes. Uh, there, the people that they had uh, were uh, not the good candidates uh, for it. <laughs> okay. uh, we, uh, there was a number of osteopathic physicians, and we felt that uh, they were... Uh, the people that they were treating needed uh, osteopathic manipulative therapy and <laughs> reconstructive therapy in their particular instance. I, I don't mean to take from neural therapy. When it is indicated, it is a fabulous, uh, effective therapy. It's just that it has a more specialized uh, or more smaller need than what reconstructive therapy does. Like exactly. Almost the planet needs uh, reconstructive therapy unless they're blessed kind of... Uh, with no injuries. Yeah, kind of go around in a uh, kind of a protective force field or something. Right. Uh, but uh, Well, you know, that, that's really an important point that you're making, Bill, because, you know, we, we have treatments, and, and we have several of them because there are limitations to each, and it's important that the patient selection be correct at the beginning because otherwise you don't get the result at the end. Absolutely. You need to... Uh, pick the right nail or the right screw for the uh, right problem, the right tool for it. Exactly. And it's, uh, as you know, I feel it's the thinkingness of unraveling the cause of that uh, core of the patient's problems. Right. It's, uh, you mentioned headaches. It uh, has tremendous value in headaches as so many people get head injuries. I just attended a lecture on another subject, and uh, the doctor pointed out an interesting concept that nobody really gets any uh, head trauma therapy in this country. I, I guess you'd have to exclude if you have a uh, subdural hematoma. You right. Get, you get burr holes. You get burr holes. You get uh -huh. uh, a craniotomy there uh -huh. to relieve the pressure. But everyone else, if their uh, CAT scan should not show or MRI should not show a collection of blood, basically their therapy is cranial checks. And it's just like uh, strokes. You water them and watch them. Right. And so they're just there in this uh, condition, whereas we have a whole chapter in uh, instant pain relief showing before and after pictures with people with different types of uh, head injuries. Well, you know, Bill, think of the, the, the problem, though. You go into your doctor, and you, you don't say you have a headache. You say, I have head pressure. Or you go in and you say, it's just not right after the accident. Here, it's, it doesn't feel right. I mean, you know, you're going to get psychiatrically classified. They, well, they, don't, they, they don't have treatment for that. They do the neurological, and then after the neurological, you get uh, now the, the scans and... Uh, then you may get some uh, furanol or the uh, sumatriptan type of medicines or the uh -huh. crescent medicines. Uh -huh. But, uh, yeah, that's basically what one gets with uh, allopathic type of evaluation. And, uh, unfortunately, it just fails to go to the root of the problem. Well, in particularly after a uh, hand injury, a fall, a blunt injury, uh, birth injuries are probably the most interesting because uh, nobody thinks about them when they're 10 years old or when they're 70 years old. Right. And, of course, we think of birth as a natural process. So what, what do you mean there's a problem with it? 
you know. And, well, uh, anybody that's been around the birth process knows that there are considerable stresses uh, on the baby and the mother and uh, considerable forces there with even a smooth delivery. Exactly. There's a lot of head molding and changes that occur that just to allow the baby to get through. We're going to talk with you about your most exciting patients or the, or the issues that you really want to bring forth, so hold with us, Bill. Right. We're joined today by Dr. William Faber from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, an expert in instant pain relief. And it's now about 30 past the hour on Star 790 KBME, the best medical updates ever. Sometimes, especially when our attention is focused on health problems, we forget that laughter is the best medicine. So now that Mother's Day has passed, our joke for today is five tips for a woman. Number one, it's important that a man helps you around the house and has a job. Number two, it's important that a man makes you laugh. Number three, it's important to find a man you can count on and doesn't lie to you. And number four, it's important that a man loves you and spoils you. And tip number five, it's important that these four men don't know each other. So, you know, May 15th is Armed Forces Day. Also, Peace Officers Memorial Day. That's the thin blue line that stands between us and crime. And, of course, the Armed Forces is that thin blue and green line that stands between us and terror and whatever distresses in our lives. So please remember them in our prayers. And remember that May 14th is Military Spouses Day, established to recognize their contributions to sustain operations around the globe. And my mother was one of those treasured spouses who made that happen. All right, let's get straight to the question. What are you waiting for? Sick and tired of feeling sick and tired or angry at not feeling better? perhaps threatened with pain or limitations or fearful about the future? Can you trust that you'll find the answers, the ones you need right now? You'd better take this responsibility seriously. You've got to find the answer somehow. You'd better be right because your survival might be in the balance. So listen to what I have to offer. Over the past two dozen years, I've developed and improved integrative treatment programs to help many people suffering with a great variety of frustrating illnesses, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, heart disease even after surgery and especially congestive heart failure, shortness of breath, restless sleep or insomnia, poor circulation and leg pains, hypoglycemia and diabetes, poor memory, even Alzheimer's or other dementias, migraines and other headaches, rheumatoid arthritis and lupus, ulcerative colitis and other gut problems, frustrating skin conditions, disabling neck and back pains, sports injuries and arthritis, even chronic pain syndromes like we're talking about today. Prostatitis, chronic urinary infections, chronic lung and sinus infections, hormones and thyroid and sexual performance, PMS, menopause, even menopause. You know, the list goes on and on and on because health deals with basic body processes, not just squashing particular symptoms with particular drugs. You could feel better than you ever expected. Now, I've lectured on these topics for over 20 years. I've written books and medical papers to share how to make healing happen. The leading authors and newsletter editors in preventive medicine have been personal friends of mine for years. And in my 25 years of practice, I've found that very few people know that simple, effective, and cost-conscious solutions are available to help with their problems, starting now. And few people realize that several of the problems for which they're seeing different specialists are often related to the same basic cause. Correcting what's causing one problem might improve several other problems that frustrate, worry, or even anger you. Make your health care investment pay even bigger dividends in your future. Get details on our exclusive and unique cashable voucher program that can return to you cash dollars for your future expenses. We're here to save your health and save your wallet as well. And that's what this show is all about. And that's what we're all about at Life Celebrating Health and Humble. Call for a free consultation with one of our treatment assistants. No fee, no obligation. Just dial 1-800-FIX-PAIN. That's 1-800-F-I-X-P-A-I-N. You're listening to Feeling Better Naturally with Dr. John Trowbridge. Invite your family and friends to tune in and join us here on Star 790 KBME for the best medical updates ever, Friday afternoons from 1 till 2. We're joined this afternoon by one of my good friends, my doctor and my teacher, Dr. William Faber from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We're talking about instant pain relief, and he is quite an acknowledged expert. Bill, tell us about what was kind of the most exciting treatment you delivered for neural therapy, where you saw a result that was just most incredible. Well, 
Uh, anytime one gets a lightning reaction, it's uh, it's it's incredible. So it's kind of uh, isn't it exciting? Yes, it's kind <laughs> of, uh, you can't really uh, discern that much from one from another potentially because there are uh-huh. many dimensions. But maybe I should define a lightning reaction. Please do. A you lightning know. reaction is when the pain uh, and range of motion or function returns uh, after immediately after a treatment, and means, meaning before the patient's feet hit the floor, and remain for at least 24 hours. Uh, eight hours in the case of uh, dental originated pain and dysfunction. You know, people are going to say, well, that's just due to the local anesthetic. We don't have any local anesthetics that last the day. Uh, I think the longest is about, uh, what, six hours? Maybe? Six, six yeah. maybe maybe a little bit more. But, yeah, six for, for an effective uh, cover. But we're not covering the pain. We're, we're changing the dynamics, aren't we? Right. The ones that we use uh, last an hour if you give the pharmacologic dose. Right, if you give them big dose, right. Yeah, we're not giving the pharmacologic dose or the drug dose. We're giving a physiologic dose, which is... A, the functional dose to do what local anesthetics do uh, physiologically, and that is to restore the electromembrane potential. And so we're giving this tiny dose. Uh, it's somewhat similar to when the person has a heart attack, they give a physiologic dose of lidocaine, one of the most popular agents used in neurotherapy, uh, intravenously, because it's known to reset the electric fibers which control the heartbeat um, in the body. Well, we use that same dose to reset the nerves. But further, we use the, uh, the needle, the tiny needle, as somewhat of a bloodless scalpel in that we had osteopathic concepts. This was not uh, mentioned. This was not spoken by the German physicians that came over in Canada. Uh, but we soon put osteopathic concepts to it that uh, this anatomy had become altered by the surgery, by the injuries, uh, tightening the fascia, the connective tissue, uh, squishing the cells, uh, not allowing their normal anatomy, and therefore some structure determines function, altering the function. So that's why we use dilute, because we can basically, like a bicycle pump on a flat tire, blow these squished areas, you might say, or crushed areas, or tightened areas, actually blow them up or expand them again so that we can restore the anatomy. And so we're working on two dimensions. The Germans had great success for many years uh, just using the electrical, which is certainly valid, but adding the osteopathic concepts thinking this to it adds even a more effective uh, degree, and uh, we've actually seen people's faces ch- uh, change permanently as a result of that, and uh, as well as their joints loosen up and get restored after many, many years. It's um, somewhat shocking to patients, so I always try to prepare them when I uh, am doing the therapy, and I feel that they will get one of these lightning reactions and tell them that uh, I expect that they're going to be immediately better as far as their pain, as far as their function. In fact, we filmed uh, about a dozen of them at the clinic. Have you seen those? Yes, I love those films. Those were excellent. Well, why don't you get a television program so we can show (laughs) We ought to do that. It's true. But, you know, Bill, when you talk about putting this other thinking to it, this osteopathic principle of structure and function, you know, it's, it's so powerful the way you look at a problem. Uh, or as our, our early quote today uh, from Frank Lloyd Wright, the truth is more important than the facts. When, when you're really dealing with what's there, what's true, and start looking at then how to deal with that in a treatment way. You know, one of the things you described in your book is about the balloons that are kind of wrapped in layers around the body. And when you have a scar that, that tacks two of these layers, kind of like uh, bubble gum uh, uh, that would, uh, or tape that would uh, make your balloon pucker instead of be free and easy, we're relieving that. And the structure does change, and the function improves, and the pain goes away. Correct. And all the years that they've had that patch on a balloon, that structure's been altered, and you can say that their 
full body has become a slave to that past. Oh, yes, because that will not move. That does not change. Correct. And, and we change that. That's beautiful. And permanently without, without drugs and really without side effects, uh, maybe bruising, attenuate soreness, but uh, the patients are ready to go, as you know, immediately. Oh, gosh, but that is so little. And what I like, and I always enjoy showing my nurses, we start to inject in, the, in that it just fills out ahead of the needle by inches. It's, it's phenomenal. Bill, we'll be right back with you. We're joined this afternoon by Dr. William Faber for Instant Pain Relief. And it's now about 40 past the hour here on Star 790 KBME, the best medical updates ever. We sometimes forget that spiritual centering is an important part of healing, you know, getting better and staying healthier. So today's verse is from Proverbs 15, verse 4. The tongue that brings healing is a tree of life, but a deceitful tongue crushes the spirit. And indeed, that's sort of what we're talking about today in terms of crushing the tissues. We change ourselves and that does crush our spirit and our heart you know when we talk about bill these uh, various uh, uh, treatments and and such people sometimes say well that that's probably not for me but is it for them well that's uh involves many dimensions that question uh-huh. i think uh uh, both of the books give a checklist on uh, and various case histories so that they can decide if it's for them or not. Right. And, and, you know, people have that intuitive sense where they go, hey, that does sound like me, doesn't it? And I encourage that a lot. Absolutely. When we talk about neural therapy, we're talking about repairing a structure that has been damaged either by injury, by surgery, um, in the case of the patient who joined us uh, earlier today by scarring from a very deep burn from a heating pad, any of these permanent structural changes is suspicious, isn't it? Uh, yes, but there can also be uh, tissues that the injury has occurred many, many years ago, and there are really not much visible signs. A burn, of course, leaves terrible scarring, and tremendous uh, tissue changes in that the area is hardened, it uh, uh, doesn't move uh, easily, it's uh, oftentimes painful, or a, a, a condition can have where they have lessened sensation or altered sensation, such as needles and pins, bugs crawling uh, among them. And then, of course, you can have conditions where uh, they've had a let's say, abdominal surgery or a chest surgery, yet they have uh, organ dysfunction. And uh, basically, instant pain relief or neurofascial therapy is kind of like reconstructive therapy, is that when your back is against the wall and you don't know where to go, you've been all, to all the fancy centers, that's where these therapies oftentimes uh, have their best glory uh, because they can fit just like a lock and key and reverse these problems that have have been unlo- have totally been ignored by dozens of physicians or thousands if you had thousands of physicians <laughs> if you had that many we well, you know, always tell people it's it's the old story with the hammer if that's the only tool you've got every problem you see looks like a nail and the ones that aren't like nails don't respond real well and uh, that's the limitation of specialization in in medicine on the other hand you know you do want a neurosurgical specialist when you're having brain surgery but what about a pain specialist when you're having pain, not a pain management specialist who teaches you how to cope with it, but someone who will fix it? Right. I uh, openly have told people for years that uh, other physicians meet at conferences. They say, well, you do pain management. And I say, I don't consider that I do pain management at all. I don't uh, manage anybody. We work towards a, uh, towards a resolution. So our treatment is from uh, A to B, basically, and not, not for foreverness. And, and A to B means you take each patient individually, look at them, evaluate them, and propose a treatment program. And if it works, how quickly are we talking about neurofascial therapy showing results? Well, this one is instant. If you don't have it instantly, you're not there, basically. If you haven't changed them immediately, then something's off. Either you've applied the therapy incorrectly, maybe you haven't applied enough, uh, maybe they need another therapy you missed, 
Maybe the patient needs uh, the uh, detoxification or uh, metabolic balancing uh, topics of your other, other programs first. Uh, for example, we just had a lady today, 74 pounds is what she weighed. Um, there wasn't neural therapy, but as far as the reconstructive therapy, we, we felt that we should do uh, nutritional treatment on this lady before we start any of the rebuilding or resetting types of therapies. Build her up so she could heal. You know, Bill, those are, those are good concepts about how this is all tied together. We'll be right back to talk more about that. It's now about 45 past the hour here on Star 790 KBME, the best medical updates ever. For your better health, let's pause briefly for this public service announcement from the Institute for Health Freedom. Now, freedom is the foundation of American society, and it's viewed as a constitutional right. But when it comes to choosing health care, the individual's freedom has been limited by burdensome regulations. You know, have you ever wondered why you're not free to choose your own health care providers and treatments without needing to get pre-approval from an insurance company or running up against some burdensome regulation? Have you ever wondered why you can't buy your health insurance through a private association other than your employer and still deduct the cost of health insurance from your taxes? Well, the Institute for Health Freedom was established to bring the issues of personal health freedom to the forefront of America's health policy debate. And our mission is to present the ethical and economic case for strengthening personal health freedom. The Institute does not endorse any health care treatment or product or provider organization. It's nonpartisan, nonprofit as a research center, a Washington-based think tank. And I am a little bit biased. I was one of the founding directors of the Institute. If you'd like to find out more information, subscribe to their newsletter, perhaps make donations and agree to help with some of their projects. The Institute for Health Freedom, the telephone 202 202- 429-6610, 202-429-6610, and that website is www.forhealthfreedom.org, forhealthfreedom.org. And today, film director George Lucas, 1944, his birthday, singer Bobby Darin in 1936. Yesterday, we missed singer Stevie Wonder, born in 1950. May 15th, Eddie Arnold, born in 1918, and on May 16th, actor Henry Fonda and pianist Liberace. Liberace born in 1919. We're back now with our good friend, Dr. William Faber from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, talking about instant pain relief. And, you know, Bill, I appreciated the way you brought in this holistic concept because we're asking your body to make structural and functional changes, not just a spot. And uh, that's so important, the big picture. Correct. When you look at a patient who's not getting better, what's their, what's their first question to you? Besides, hey, Doc, why isn't it working? Uh, that's an interesting question. We actually uh, don't have that many. Uh, it's somewhat a... Um, somewhat an uh, anomalous occurrence to have that. Uh, exactly why I asked the question, my friend. <laughs> it just, it works so well. It is such a startlingly successful opportunity for people to get better. And again, that's because we choose the patients carefully. And like you say, we look for the big picture and go for what has to be fixed first, if that's the case, too. Well, now that i have uh, thinking about it, well, that's why I've known you since uh, the early 80s, because you are, uh, of course, a uh, long-experienced uh, heavy metal uh, physician and uh, in removing heavy metals, a uh, frequent uh, occult uh, cause of many types of uh, illness and heart disease, among other things. And then, of course, you're also... Uh, in a similar vein, uh, one of the nation's authorities on the clinical diagnosis and treatment of uh, candidiasis with your youth syndrome. And uh, both of these conditions are commonly overlooked, but uh, present in large numbers of the populace. And certainly can interfere with their healing, can't it? Can interfere with the healing. And uh, if we find that we're not going the right direction, we need to look in these different fashions, as you've had on your shows, to look for these hidden problems and then remove those so that then we can proceed with our anatomical uh, treatment of the neural therapy or the reconstructive therapy. 
You know, Bill, I think that's important. You you keep talking about hidden this and hidden that. The the treatment, if it were obvious, it would have already been done by the other doctors. It's hidden causes of discomfort and distress for the body that really require someone to use a different way of looking, a different way of thinking, and therefore a different way of treatment. And everybody gets so concerned, you know, about, oh, well, alternative medicine, and I don't know if I agree with that and such. Wait, wait, wait. What about thinking about the problem the way it really is rather than the way you would want it to be? Well, you're exactly right. The problem, as you well know, is that uh, physicians do not think in the same way that yourself and myself and your other guests that have had anatomical and uh, metabolic uh, treatment uh, modalities uh, that they've studied with and worked with they don't have an understanding of this different uh, viewpoint on patients. And uh, so it's a thinkingness. It's a, it's a different understanding of what is happening and what to do. The traditional physician uh, looks towards uh, primarily uh, drugs for their uh, magic bullets and then, of course, uh, surgery. And uh, there's some assorted uh, therapies in a, in a much less frequent amount that, that they give. But it's always with this drug and surgery type of paradigm. And uh, the problem is that myself, yourself, and many other people have fallen through these cracks. Right. And it's not really small amounts of people. It's really large amounts of people that have. And uh, you need to have a whole different set of tools, a whole different awareness to handle these people, as, as you well know. You know, that's true. People say, well, you know, are you, are you, like you saying that uh, other doctors are dumb or you're so much smarter. No, that, that's not it at all. It's that, you know, you're, you're always down on what you're not up on, and we're up on a different lookingness at it and a different thinking about it, and that's where these tools came from. That's why we so readily embrace these different tools, because you go, hey, that makes sense. And it does for patients, doesn't it? Well... I don't know. I think it might be have to do with how we're created as the type of spirits we are. We're both are not legacies, you know, and that our fathers were not uh, medical personnel, nor were our mothers. And uh, also, we were both uh, chronic pain patients at a very exactly. age. Exactly. Early, early age. That's uh, right. And uh, disabled 24-7 with, uh, with chronic pain. And we had been in the medical merry-go-round ourselves. Right. And had been to the medical centers and uh, took the pills, which made, our, made us tired and sick, or sick and tired, and uh, in your case, had the operations. I was saved by the, uh, the hair of my teeth, basically, <laughs> the skin of my teeth from uh, a back surgery. But uh, you never told me, were you called uh, psychological at one time? No, you had to be. You know, I, I never really was, but I certainly did get, you know, things like Valium for muscle spasm relaxation. And I'm sure they were looking at a psychiatric assist on that. Yeah, well, after I had my myelogram, uh, the, the surgeon felt that mine was uh, psychological because my pain shifted from the one leg to the other after the myelogram. And it took osteopathic training to know, well, I don't know, unstable pelvis. Right. That's why when they uh, give you the big narcotics and then they haul you from the uh, treatment table to the uh, gurney, well, it shifted my pelvis and uh, it shifted legs, and he thought that that meant that I was hysterical. No, that's just pretty obvious stuff, that's all. <laughs> well, years later it became obvious after that was uh, when I was still in high school. That right. Was years later with a different thinking on it. Well, with a different thinking, but, you know, medical training, as you know, is extremely extensive and extremely long and laborious, et cetera, and uh, it, it seems like it, unfortunately, is just a few of us that can kind of pop out of that mold into uh, other thinkingness so that we're not, basically, so that we're not uh, pimps for the... Uh, <laughs> for the uh, drugs. <laughs> pharma, and, uh, of course, the hospital industry is huge, too. Exactly. And uh, basically, in primary care, uh, physicians are pretty much uh, to be pimps to uh, bring them in the business so they can do the mega biopsy, uh, billfold biopsy. Billfold biopsy, <laughs> okay. Bill, we've got uh, one minute for a take-home message. What would you want the listeners to remember about neurofascial therapy? Well, if you've had pain, dysfunction... Uh, after uh, an 
injury, have had injuries, burns, uh, hits, uh, surgeries, balls, breaks uh, at any time in your life, and you can't find relief, I would suggest uh, see Dr. Trowbridge, uh, get from him the instant pain relief book, the pain, pain, go away book, or uh, ask to listen to one of his uh, programs on this and uh, see if you might be a candidate, uh, as you probably are, and it can permanently change your life as it has mine and Dr. Trowbridge's. Absolutely. Thanks again for joining us this afternoon, Bill. It's always a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you. You take great care, okay? All right. God bless you. God bless you, sir. So what's our take home on this uh, message here? Well, Dr. William Faber is an expert. His book, Instant Pain Relief, ideally explains this. So if you have migraines or head injury, chronic pain, or pain after surgery or injury, no matter how minor it seems, or loss of motion, nerve damage, or other problems that have yet to be helped, neurofascial therapy might be just what you've prayed for, a proven method of immediate resolution of pain and dysfunction. So Instant Pain Relief is now in its second edition, Pain, Pain, Go Away, the classic written by Dr. Faber. Also the book that we wrote together, Do What You Want to Do Regarding Reconstructive Therapy, a sister procedure that dramatically helps improve painful joints. You should know that help is available now. That's your hope for the future. Anna from the Woodlands emailed and asked me to comment on articles she's read about sticky blood and heart attacks and strokes. So next week we'll talk about turning water into honey and back again. So be sweet all week and tune in for some revolutionary information that could save your life. Today's show is dedicated to all those souls still suffering with chronic pain that limits their life and their comfort with my prayer that they will discover a future of pain relief just as I have. It is so frustrating when we talk about these techniques and these technologies. It is so frustrating that people go, well, maybe later, maybe not me, maybe for others, but not for me. And you wonder what on earth are they waiting for? And, you know, sometimes it almost sounds like we're, we're trying to bend an arm to get people in, but what we're trying to say is, why uh, is your life going by? What indeed would you do different if you had it to do? If you were healthy, if you felt better, if you had opportunities in your life that you do not now have because you are limited and uncomfortable and otherwise losing your hope and your faith for the future. So this show, Feeling Better naturally, is designed to share these techniques and these technologies with you to show you that treatments are available, they are real, they are current, they are state-of-the-art, that many people will be practicing more and more in the future because this is the horizon of medical care, and we want you to know that now because your need might be right now. Our production engineer today is Mark Fisher, production assistants Catherine Hill and Kathy Guyon. So thanks for joining me today. Have you learned practical pointers to help you regain and maintain better health? Maybe to help you guide your family or friends toward new solutions for their problems. Audio tape and CD copies of this show are available for your personal reference and to share with family and friends. Simply call 1-800-FIX-PAIN for details. Now, what health problems are bringing you down, limiting your comfort, and threatening your future? Share your questions by email, info at healthchoicesnow.com, by fax, 281-540-4329, or by mail. Just call 1-800-FIX-PAIN for our address, or call to talk with one of our treatment assistants and let us know what special information we might send to you. Receive our free e-newsletter simply by sharing your email address with us, and enjoy the free downloads available on our website, www.healthchoicesnow.com. Because if you don't know that you have choices now, you don't have any. Feel free to come by to see what's so special and visit with patients who are feeling better right now. They're anxious to share their successes with you in person. We're next to the Northeast Medical Center Hospital near Bush Intercontinental Airport. Call 1-800-FIX-PAIN for directions or a map. We'd love to show you where better health happens. Remember, if your money, your time, your effort, your comfort, or even your life is at stake, get the very best answers and the very best treatment you can find. 
Rely on experts who can make sense out of your problems, who have the experience to produce results for you. When life is your choice, failure is not an option. Our message is one of hope for a healthier future, and we aim to produce these results for you. Invite your family and friends to join me next week, Friday afternoon from 1 till 2, on Star 790 KBME for the best medical updates ever. Exclusively on Feeling Better Naturally with Dr. John Trowbridge. Have a great day and a wonderful week.